Yeah, I know, I know. This is the third video on love I've done in a row. But come on, it's a topic that everyone can relate to. Like even if you haven't had much of a love life, you've at least probably had a crush. Unless you just hate everyone or something, I don't know. And when we think of love, we have a generally positive attitude about it. Sure, some people have had their hearts broken, and some people could have even completely given up on love. But generally, it's a pretty great feeling, from having a crush to being in a long-term relationship. But when we think about love, we don't tend to associate selfishness with love. Cause selfishness, you know, that's one of those bad things, and we wouldn't want that bad thing over there to taint our holy and pure thing over here. And yet Nietzsche says otherwise. In his very poetic book The Gay Science, he has a section on what is called love in Book 1st, Section 14. And yes, it's called Book 1st and not Book 1. Don't ask me why, Nietzsche can be confusing enough as is. Hey friends, it's Paul from Philosophy Tunes, and I know this is a hyper generalization, but just from my own personal anecdotal experience, people in the philosophy community are either really great in their romantic affairs, or pretty bad. There's rarely a middle ground. And I know, I know, you probably think you're definitely in the former group, and hey, if you're subscribed to this channel, you probably are. But someone who definitely falls into the bad at romance group is our pal Friedrich Nietzsche. There's even a movie I've never watched about Nietzsche's sad love life. Imagine, you spend your whole life writing philosophy and that's what they decide to make a movie about. Now, even if he did have a less than desirable love life, does his writing on love hold some value? I'll let you be the judge. So Nietzsche's first sentences of this piece also sum it up pretty nicely. The lust of property and love. What different associations each of these ideas evoke. And yet, it might be the same impulse twice named. So again, let's think about how society would view these two things. I know it's super elementary and reductionist to label large concepts such as these as either good or bad, but generally speaking, if you were to ask a man on the street, they'd say that lust of property is bad and that love is good. Lust of property, you know, makes me think of those American Industrial Revolution business magnates, like Rockefeller and Vanderbilt and Carnegie. Putting aside their philanthropic efforts, these guys were pretty big, working hard to get more and more and more. And ironically enough, despite their great wealth, we probably have better living standards than they. I mean, only one of us can really play LEGO Star Wars, Rockefeller. Enjoy riding around in horse carriages or whatever you guys do for fun. Love, on the other hand, is a good thing as we discussed earlier. But could it be that it isn't that different than the lust of property? Here's what Nietzsche has to say. The lover wants the unconditioned sole possession of the person longed for by him. He wants just as absolute power over her soul as over her body. He wants to be loved solely, and to dwell and rule in the other soul as what is highest and most to be desired. Now, there's a lot to talk about here, which makes The Gay Science a really good Nietzsche book. It's full of short, easy sections that contain a large amount of insight, which is ripe for discussion. Let's start by acknowledging that, generally speaking, lovers want their partner for themselves. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems to be one of those universals, regardless of culture. Across the globe, it seems like in almost every culture, you'd get your ass kicked trying to hook up with someone else's partner. So Nietzsche seems right in that, generally, lovers are selfish when it comes to their partner. At least when it comes to their love. Like, you aren't locking someone in a cage and cutting off their social life. Friends and all that are cool. It's only when romance or sex happens with someone else that a problem occurs. And I say Nietzsche is generally right because in today's world there are more of these non-traditional relationships popping up. I've known people in open relationships and a good friend of mine is actually in a polyamorous relationship. Even so though, and poly people correct me if I'm wrong, but my anonymous friend does admit that jealousy does emerge. But seeing as that jealousy is not enough to leave that poly or open relationship, in most cases, is Nietzsche's perspective limited in this regard? Let me know your thoughts. Another point to bring up is that he's going a bit far in saying a lover would want absolute power over the person's soul and body. I mean, yeah, we don't want our partners to cheat on us or love someone else, but it doesn't follow that we want to control every aspect of their life. Now, I know this does vary with relationships to an extent. Some couples are hyper-involved in each other's lives and others aren't as much. Some people see relationships as a unity of two people, while others see it as two distinct individuals loving each other as individuals. I'm kind of in the latter category. Me and my girlfriend live our own lives and we're different individually, but we're good together and our personalities play off each other rather than just mirror each other. But that's just my perspective. Do you view love and relationships in that other way? The more unity-centered way? Let me know below. 
But even if you do, would you want to control their soul and body like Nietzsche means? I mean he goes as far as comparing it to a dragon in his cave hoarding his gold like some dragon tail shit. Is this true? Maybe we're just being too sentimental and Nietzsche is being the realist here. As per usual, I'm gonna stay neutral on this one and ask you guys what you think. Let me know in the comments below. And that's our short video for this week. Nietzsche has some other sections on love in this book, so let me know if you want to hear more from him. If you enjoyed the video, then subscribe, like, hit the bell, and let me know which American industrialist you are in the comments. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.